Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Kaui Lucas. And I'm Raya Salter. Our show this week is about LiveU, the remarkable wireless transmission technology that changes the world of remote live video. ThinkTech is fortunate enough to have been able to acquire one of these units, and we want to show you what we've been doing with it. The unit itself is the size of a cigar box, outfitted with special bonding technology that combines multiple cell phone modem signals into one fast broadband connection. This technology is driving a video revolution, providing live feed for television, mobile, online, and social media transmitting high-quality live video content from anywhere in the world. Remote live video offers promising possibilities for online news, events, sports, education, and more. The in-the-moment effect is a big boost for delivery of content to audiences everywhere. With help from the Cook Foundation, for which we are very grateful, we were able to acquire a live view transmitter, server, and the related operating software, and we brought them online a few weeks ago. First, we started with doing walkabouts in the downtown area, including locations on the 4th Street Mall and Tamarind Park at Bishop Square. Here are some of the interviews we had there. We are here um, outside 4th Street Mall talking to folks about fake news. I mainly, you know, get my news out of real news sources, so I don't, I don't spend it. a lot of time getting fake news off of fair, social fair, media. Fair enough. Maybe I, that's I, a safe way. What I, are the sources that you prefer? Well, I watch about, you've got to watch four different TV channels to get any real news anymore. The real news used to be when Jay Fidel and I were around, you listen to Uncle, Uncle Walter Cronkite tell you the news, and that, that was the damn news. So are you familiar with fake news? I've heard of this, yes. I, I don't know too much about it, but I've seen it on the news, and then they kind of retract themselves, the New York Times and some of the other folks. Yeah, so apparently... Um, there are stories that go out that are jokes or complete fabrications, and people pass them along and then start believing it. It's, uh, they have a saying here in Hawaii, if it's said three times, it's no longer a rumor, it's the truth. <laughs> are you familiar with fake news? Sadly, yes. I, I know, oh, I've heard about it, but... You've heard about it? Yeah. Um, well, what have you heard about it? Go ahead and tell us. Well, the thing is that it's just, it's more of a, I guess you can say like a... a a popular thing between trends of the younger generation, in my opinion. I, like, honestly, I don't believe it to be like real news, if anything, but I've seen people always posting stuff on Instagram, like how they would request it through a text message. This is something that's relatively new to me. Is this something you've heard of before? Um, well, you see it a lot, especially via social media, um, with a lot of different things, because a lot of people, they'll go ahead and post stuff, like even in terms of like the, the elections, they were saying, oh, okay, well, there was a big turnout. There's oh, well, you know, CNN said it wrong, or New York Times printed the wrong numbers, or the picture was fake, or falsified. And I think the, the issue is that people don't really do, you know, their research. So he's only 11 days into his uh, administration. How's he doing? I don't think he's doing very good, but everyone's different. Yeah? Yeah, I think there's, like, a lot of changes suddenly, I think. Suddenly. Yeah. 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 I guess we just have to wait to, like, see how it plays like out. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See what happens, like, it's four years, it's not even 11 days, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. We, we wait for four years. Yeah. I hope, I hope we don't have to wait that long to see a better result. Yeah. Yeah, so what about all those people from those seven countries that he banned? He banned. What about them? How do you feel about them? It's not fair, like, especially if they are American citizens too, just because they, like, if they're dual citizenship, just because of the other country they come from, they're not allowed in, you know? Yeah. I think it's unfair too. Yeah, you, got, you guys, are you are you from the U.S.? No. Oh, where are you from? The U.K. Have you been banned yet? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so let's talk about Europe for a minute. You know, there are a lot of issues in Europe. Yeah. In Germany and France, and uh, for that matter, Belgium, and so on. But they're not. It's not in Scandinavia. Scandinavia doesn't have issues like that. Yeah. No. I think it's because of the strict politics. You know, uh, when the Syria crisis. We didn't take that many uh, people in in our country. Personally, I don't think that was a good way to handle you it. I think they should have taken more uh, migrants. Yeah, I think. Germany took so many and we didn't take any compared to those, so... What are you studying? Environmental studies. Ah, what are you yeah. going to do with that? I have no idea. <laughs> I wanted to work in the federal government, but... <laughs> yeah, that may not be so easy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in terms of energy use alone, because I'm an environmental student, I would say 
we definitely are putting ourselves on a path of losing out um, in terms of a global scale, denying a lot of science that has to do with green technology. I mean, even if we lived in an area that relies heavily on like the coal industry, there's no denying that the industry itself is dying. If your doctor is telling you like you are going to get diabetes with the next donut that you eat, that's what all the scientists are telling us about the climate, like the next barrel of gasoline is gonna tank us so maybe we should stop you would listen to your doctor so it's kind of ridiculous that we're just ignoring all the scientists I think that a lot of people will tell you that they personally don't want an abortion or anything but it still is not consistent with American values to deny other people a choice to be able to do that well it's an open market you know you come out here you get local produce you got local fruits you know we pick it up we bag it and we bring it out here and you know it, and we distribute it to the people of the island you know and I feel that you know everything local is a lot better than buying stuff from the mainland and other stuff so yeah it's 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 very healthy as you can see we got a lot of stuff that people come and they want mango avocado you know fresh fruits fresh vegetables uh, my top four flavors I do a classic uh, popcorn which is uh, uh, cooked in sugar and then lightly salted a caramel where it's cooked the same exact way and then salted um, a rainbow, so five different colors, five different fruit flavors. And I do, because I'm from Chicago, I do a Chicago mix, I call it. Okay, Chicago. what's that about? So that is a smoky cheddar with my own concoction of, rest of uh, seasonings. It's got some smoky flavor in there, so it's got a little bit of heat, and then it's coupled with a sweet caramel, so that right there is the Chicago. Bike Share will have, will have public bikes. Uh, there's gonna be a thousand bikes in urban Honolulu, spread out. Hey. Uh, across a hundred stations between basically here in Chinatown downtown to Waikiki and so you'll be able to pick up a bike at any one of those stations and ride it to any other station uh, for a low very affordable fee uh, something you can purchase monthly access or you can purchase uh, like a one-time use or uh, some discounted rides. So what do you think about uh, bike share? Oh, It's gonna be awesome um, hopefully we'll get even more bikes out on the street to use all these new facilities that are coming in and uh, uh, when you're riding your bike around it's always good to see other people on bikes and to have a thousand more bikes on the street is going to be great. We're here talking to folks um, in the park about their plans for Valentine's Day. First ladies maybe you can tell me are you single? I'm single. Oh, okay, <laughs> fellas, she's single. <laughs> she's married. Uh -oh. <laughs> Off the market. Okay, so that's great. We've got two situations. So, do you have anything in particular planned for Valentine's Day? I'm probably celebrating more of a Galentine's Day or a Palentine's Day. Now, tell us, what is that? This is sounding excellent. What is that? So, celebrating with your girlfriends or guy friends, um, rather than if you don't have a significant other. I think he's. I don't think he's doing a very good job. Um, I think he's making a lot of big decisions that are influencing um, this country negatively. Do you think those decisions are based on the advice he's getting from his, uh, his newly hired staff, or do you think he's uh, directing the whole, the whole um, agenda? I think it's a combination of both, definitely. Um, I think he's definitely got some specific ideological views, um, but I think he's being heavily influenced by those in the White House. Um, I think he was definitely very influenced by um, by Flynn, who's just resigned. Um, and it's probably a good thing that Flynn's gone, to be honest. From my personal perspective, growing up in Europe, we always looked at the United States at the, as the land of freedom, the land where no matter what your background is or um, where you were from or the color of your skin, you could actually be someone if you worked hard. And I guess um, past couple of weeks has, have challenged that uh, idea. Then we expanded our walkabouts to the state capitol, and here are some of the interviews we had there. And I'm Marcia Joyner, and today we are at the Hawaii State Capitol, and we were here to hear the decision making about the bill Medical Aid in Dying. And with me is Scott Foster, who has been with this issue for how long? 28 years. Brittany Ross. Hi, yes. Yes. And Brittany, tell us all about Brittany. Hi, I am um, currently living in Hawaii. I've been here the last year. Uh, I've lived in Hawaii off and on the last 10 years. 
Um, I just started working with the Death with Dignity National Center in Oregon. So I've teamed up with Mr. Scott Foster and Marsha, um, working hard to get this legislation through uh, the Senate and the House this year. Doctors deal with this issue all the time in hospitals. You know, they're controlling people's pain, but that control of pain often results in them dying. And uh, they call that a dual effect. But, I mean, you know, the, you don't do this to patients without the, their consent. But they say, you tell them, look, we're going to help your pain, but if we control your pain, we give you enough medication to control your pain, you're likely to stop breathing. And all of this, like a volcano, is open to the sky and the legislators offices are all the way around all through here and then the governor is up on the top floor and the lieutenant governor's on the top floor and here is my dear friend oh, hi. hi how you doing this is blake oshiro yeah i was in the state legislature from 2000 to 2011. So what do you expect on the floor well we're hoping that the vote for the senate will be favorable it will pass by a strong majority vote and then at that point it crosses over to the house and the house will get their opportunity to hear the bill and really see the amount of support that there is for medical aid in dying and ultimately pass it like right now we have a five-day recess but as you can see, this is when all the hearings are going on because there's no session. So it's actually very busy during the recess time. And the terms like decking and crossover, all these technical terms that is basically used within the House that give deadlines for when bills need to move or uh, a process. So many times we call, we'll, we'll say a bill is dead. That means it didn't reach a certain milestone by a certain day ends up on the governor's desk, uh, but before it gets there, that bill has to go through a rigorous departmental review. So the attorney general's office has to look at it and make sure that it complies with all legal um, uh, issues. Then the department has to look at it to make sure that it complies with um, all of the uh, directives that the department is working on and that, that that's, there's no conflicts, right? So once it passes legal review, department review, then it comes to the governor's desk. And the governor then has to decide whether he's going to sign it, whether he's going to veto it, or whether he'll let it become law without his signature. Well, of course, I'm going to ask you about Bill 201, um, medical aid in dying, since you made that a priority at the opening of the legislature. You said that was one of your priorities. How is it doing? Well, it hasn't been heard yet, but I believe it will because uh, we have a lot of time yet. Uh, the bill has been uh, referred to uh, uh, judiciary and finance. So, and as I said, we're only on, uh, going into second reading now, and you need a f a four readings on the line. So it's, 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 it's very early. But uh, at this point, I can say that the... Uh, the majority of the House, I think, I believe, feels favorably for the passage of that bill. And I wonder how you feel about the engagement of the public in the legislature this season, maybe based on what happened in November. Well, I think most people are focused on national politics. People are out, you know, really making their voices known on national politics, national issues. It's been kind of quiet over here. We hope that they, we're starting to see a pickup in activity, but hopefully they'll come out to their legislature and make their voices known. There's a lot of things we can do to add to their voice to the legislative process, even though it has to do with the federal government or the new president. <laughs> you know, some people say, Angus, that that what's happening in Washington may have implications for Hawaii, uh, the social safety net and other issues, and they worry about it. And therefore, the legislature might be concerned about trying to make Hawaii more resilient against changes in Washington. Do you see that kind of thinking? That is absolutely correct. We've had joint hearings uh, already uh, with health and human services on those issues. We could stand to lose $230 million of federal Medicaid money for Hawaii each year. Hi, my name is Virginia Beck and I work here in the public access room at the state capitol and we are here to help citizens interact with the legislature. 
So however we can help, we're nonpartisan, we're non-issue oriented, so um, we keep our opinions to ourselves, but we want you to add your voice to the process. I'm one of the co-conveners for the Women's Legislative Caucus, which was started uh, by some predecessors to my mother even uh, years ago. I think we are the second oldest Women's Legislative Caucus in the nation. So we focus on issues of uh, domestic violence, women and children's health care, and other issues, um, equal pay, uh, gender rights. Uh, I also work a lot on land use and environmental areas because that was my focus prior to coming to the legislature. Again, both in um, private practice as well as when I was working for the state government at the Department of Land and Natural Resources. The legislature in Hawaii, at least, is condensed in 60 legislative days. And so every day is going to be busy. We have sometimes 12, 14, 16 hour days. As vice speaker, I basically am the speaker's wingman. Now, today, speaker's not here, so I'm signing off on a lot of um, documents that he would normally sign on. Uh, if there are people that are coming from other countries to meet with the speaker and he's not here, I will be there. Even when he's here, I'm part of the leadership team, I'll be here. So I'm basically his second in command, and I do my best to try to keep everyone together. On Kauai, we're very rural. Um, we have the seed industry there. Um, we are where they're proposing a new type of dairy, which is a, an issue right now. Um, access to fishing areas in the ocean is also a concern. Um, and of course, protecting our drinking water because Kauai is, um, as you know, a small island that flows from Waialeale really close to the shore. How do you feel about Sam being gone? I miss Sam. You know, Sam has a... Um self-deprecating humor, he has a oratory vo voice, and he is kind of the bellwether of all the conservative issues in the state of Hawaii. So he, he's dearly missed, but we had him at the beer summit last week, and he was jovial and giving his sense of what the world should be like according to the Lone Ranger, and he's gonna do well. We're, we're, we're trying to get him a uh, Trump administration appointment. Learning every day, we went to City Hall and talked with some of the council members and staff in order to complete the construction of rail, uh, clearly uh, what's going to have to happen is that the legislature is going to have to um, authorize the counties to be able to extend that surcharge. So that issue is presently before the state legislature and ultimately the, uh, the determination as to how much of the um, uh, rail project we'll be able to construct will we'll rest with the legislature in terms of whether or not they want to uh, allow the city and county of Honolulu to extend the surcharge. Well, what about the property tax, and how, how does that fit into all of this? Well, uh, we have an ordinance in place that was adopted by the city council uh, a number of years ago, which prohibits the use of real property tax revenues uh, to cover the construction costs for rail. So uh, that prohibition is still in place. Uh, I have made clear uh, as uh, the council chair to uh, my former colleagues at the state legislature that um, uh, we do not want to tap into real property tax revenues to finance the construction costs for rail. Um, the concern of council members is the fact that uh, residents and businesses are having a tough enough time as it is. There's an ordinance existing now, uh, Ordinance 0701, and that means it's the first ordinance that, will, that uh, became an ordinance in the year 2007 specifically states that there are only two mechanisms of funding for rail construction. That's monies derived from the state general excise tax surcharge and monies derived from the federal government. So that means that there are no other funding sources that can be used for rail construction. That's rail construction. Well, what about operation? Operation and maintenance, we will need to utilize real property tax revenues as we do now for the operation of our existing uh, city public transportation system. So if you look at our city public transportation system today, we have the bus and we have the handy van. Uh, the city subsidizes that. Uh, no public transit system in America, as far as I'm aware, operates uh, at a profit. They're all subsidized by the taxpayer and they are all governmental services, core government services, I may add. So once rail comes online, it's going to join the handy van and the bus as part of Honolulu's public transportation system, and we will subsidize it, and we plan to subsidize it. Most recently, we took our unit to Kaka'ako to find out what's new in the powwow art scene and in the new shops and restaurants. Here's some of the footage we got there. Our store uh, has been open for, uh, for about a month, 
and uh, and and so far the uh, it has been been very uh, popular with uh, with the with the customers in in the neighborhood. Well, people actually like the lehua honey, the black sesame, the rum raisin that actually has um, alcohol in it, and people also like the Earl Grey. All right. Well, I. We wanted to create creative arts, so um, we decided to open one. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. So it's just been two weeks that you've been here. So what has been the response so far? So far, great. We have um, our first fully booked class this Saturday, which is tomorrow, the cartooning for kids. So we're excited about that. Um, and just getting the community more involved and talking today. We're going to be at Eat the Street Chocolate, which is across the street, um, handing out flyers, talking about our opening, and yeah, letting people know we're here. Okay. Okay, hi, here we are at Lana Lane Studios, which was really ground zero for the um, powwow that happened. So this is where all the artists come together to put these murals together. We are here at Heavy Metal Inc. in Kaka'ako. I started my jewelry line in 2013, and I do a, a lot of sterling silver metal work. And I moved into this uh, space last year in August, and so, um, you know, it's been really great meeting different artists and like-minded creatives and um, just in this whole area, really. You just hang out and you see a bunch of people in the industry, so it's really great. This is all giving us a great opportunity to learn how to best use this technology and stream this content to our ThinkTech viewers. For now, we are streaming these walkabouts and the breaks between our afternoon talk shows on Tuesdays and Fridays. So stay tuned for more, not only in our studio talk shows and in our OC16 feature shows, but also in our live high-tech remote walkabouts. As they say, think tech, better every day. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them. But ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the islands and the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekend. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. Our audio stream is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. And we are also posting podcasts of all our shows on iTunes. See our website for links. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
and you can call into our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 415-871-2474 and pose a question or participate in the discussion. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Raya, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it? Just like Raya does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And new video transmission equipment, of course. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Kawi Lucas. And I'm Raya Salter. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.